Howdy, I'm Blaine Carter. I'm Oracle's developer advocate for open source, and today we're going to be looking at an open source project called Logger. It's a PLSQL logging utility, and you can find it here on GitHub at github.com slash or open source slash logger. In a previous video, we covered how to install Logger and verify the installation. In this video, we'll look at the recommended practices for adding Logger to your code. The examples we'll be following can be found on the GitHub Logger page under Documentation, Best Practices. I'll be adding Logger to some code from DinoDate, the premier dating service for dinosaurs. Now, of course, any dating service needs a send message function and we're going to use this procedure from the admin package and I will be using the tried and true programming practice of copy paste and change to try and keep this short. Alright first thing we want to do is we want to add a package global constant to the package here this will store the package name concatenate with dot and we will use this as part of our scope value going forward then in the procedure itself we want to add a couple variables. The first one is lscope. This will of course be used to store the, uh, the scope information. We want to make sure we add the correct procedure name so we'll have package.procedure in that value. And the second one is lparams. Now this is a table that will be used to store the parameter names and values. Now let's populate that table. We want to take this one, copy that over there. Okay, so one of the reasons I chose the send message procedure was because it has multiple parameters. And for that, we want to call this procedure, this append params procedure, once for each parameter that we want to store. So let's do the magic copy paste stuff and get the correct parameter values in the table. Alright, and the next thing we want to do is we're going to just put in a debug log that says start. Now I kind of like having uh, this start log here. I've had a far too often I've been troubleshooting a procedure that has not actually been called yet and with this log that will show us that yes you actually made it into the procedure. So from there, a similar one is we want to add a end debug log that shows us that, hey, we made it all the way through the procedure and we got to the end. You'll notice in both of those debug logs that we are passing in the scope and in the start log we'll pass in the parameters. If we made it to the end, we don't actually need the parameters anymore, so we'll just pass in the scope. You'll notice that our procedure has no error handling and yes this is bad so we'll add a little bit of exception handling here and I like to get everything tabbed over correctly alright so what this is doing is we're gonna add an a when others exception handler and in there we're gonna log an error notice these were debug logs this is an error log and we're gonna pass in unhandled exception we're also going to pass in the scope and the parameters. Notice this third parameter here is null in these two places. This parameter is if you want to pass in a large amount of data such as a clob, you'd pass it into this parameter. We are not, so we're just going to pass null in here. Now since I'm just adding, the, the purpose of this change is just to add logging, I don't want to handle the exception at this time because I'm not quite sure what else might be calling this send message procedure and if I handle this and it's supposed to be handled somewhere else then we're going to break other functionalities. So we're just going to raise the exception at this point. So that's basically what it looks like to add the, the, the recommended logs to a procedure and you know, of course you can add whatever logs you'd like but let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. We are going to call our procedure send message and we're going to send a message from user 0 to user 3. Just I'm sending a message and a timestamp inside the message. So let's go ahead and run that. 
There we go, and let's see what logs were generated. All right, you can see here that we first we got our start log, and our scope was set to send message, our end log, and our scope was set to send message as well. And if we look in our extra field over here, you'll see the parameters from member ID 0 to member ID 3, the subject, and the comments in the message. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, we didn't send any parameters to the end message, so it didn't wind up in the extra field. One other thing about the extra column here, this is the column where if you had sent some information in that third parameter, the clob field, it would be added into this value. You'd still get the parameters, but you'd also get the other data. All right, so let's break this and see what happens. We're going to send a message from user 1 to user 3, and user 1 does not exist, so we should get our exception. Remember, we just raised the exception after we logged the error, and so we expected to see this integrity constraint here. But let's look at the logs that were generated from that time. All right, so we have our, our start log showing that we made it in there, and we did not get the end log this time. Instead, we got this unhandled exception. Now, if you'll remember back in the package, we passed in the text unhandled exception, the scope and the params. Here, however, in the text, we got the unhandled exception that we did pass in, but logger automatically added the actual error, since this was an error log, showing that we had an integrity constraint, uh, and there's the constraint that was violated, parent key not found. If we move over past the scope, we can see that it also includes a call stack that shows that the error that we got, same as in the other column, and this time we got in the admin package line 32, added from our call stack. So let's jump back over there and you'll see that line 32 is saying in our insert statement was where the error happened and using that information we can pop back over to our extras column like we looked at before and we can see from member ID 1 to member ID 3 the other values aren't as useful and with that information we can quickly go in and determine that one of our members doesn't exist. So that's a bonus information that you get from Logger just by logging the error. And that's a brief overview on how to add Logger to your code following the recommended practices. Now, of course, once you get the logs into the system, you're going to want to pull them back out. And you could just write your own query pulling from the Logger logs table like what we've been doing throughout the examples. Or if you're just interested in the most recent logs, you could use one of the uh, helpful views that comes included with Logger. For example, Logger Logs 5min will show you just the logs that have been created within the last five minutes. And Logger Logs 60min, as you might guess, will show you the logs that have been added within the last hour. Now, if you just want a very brief overview of show me the, the most recent logs and just a little bit of data, you can use Logger Logs Terse, which will show you the logs within the last five minutes, but this view will only show you the ID, the log level, the text, and here it converts the timestamp into a X minutes ago. So all of these logs have happened within the last two minutes. And... Um, those can be uh, very helpful if you're just debugging and you're running through uh, you know, what's, what's happened recently without having to write a big fancy where clause. I hope this video has been useful to you. If so, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.